I don't know about you, but I thought uh, Michael and Joshua both did an incredible community contribution right there. But uh, let's say a prayer and dive into the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Father, uh, thank you so, so much for gathering us here at the park, God, to see your, your lovely creation and just to see uh, people come to you. And um, what an incredible story by, by, by Joshua's testimony. And just to help us uh, be reminded how much you care for us, how much you love us, and how every experience you bring us through is to teach us, God, who you are, Father. I pray you're with this lesson. I pray that uh, you could help us to get focused on you, God. I know that we're at the park, so there's a lot of distractions, but yeah. help us to learn from your word and to change into different people who you want us to be. In amen. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome, guys. Well, the title for today's lesson is Building the Modern Day Ark. Let's go to Genesis 6 and verse 9. So, of course, we saw God make Adam and Eve in the first couple chapters. It got really wicked. The earth got super wicked. And in Genesis 6, verse 9, it says, This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked with God. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence and the earth. So make yourself an ark. Let's stop right here. So the earth was super wicked to the point where God said, I need to start all over. <laughs> And he chooses this man, Noah. You know what's encouraging is we are making an ark as well. Yeah. The earth is super wicked. Yeah. I was even talking to Anna's dad earlier, and he says, man, just going to Portland State, you could see all the idolatry, all the ways that the earth has just corrupted their ways. Yeah. And God has actually told us, make yourself an ark. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, yeah. Because we get brought into the kingdom, we're in all the kingdom, but then we start building the kingdom. Yeah. And so the kingdom is actually for us. Yeah. It's a protection. It's, a, it's safety. Come on, bro. And as much as Noah was chosen, we're chosen, guys. Yeah. Come on. We're chosen by God. And, and it's funny why he was chosen. Um, we're, we have three points today. Because we're talking about building the modern day art. We're talking about building the kingdom. Yeah. We're going to talk about three things that we need to build with. Number one, you got to build by walking with God. Come on, bro. You see, Noah was considered righteous. Why? Because he walked with God. And for me, that word righteous alone always gave me a little irk as a young disciple. Because I go, man, am I really righteous? You know, what does righteous mean? Just For me, it was just can't sin. You know, as soon as I begin to argue, I'm, I'm not righteous anymore. As my ministry cranking, if it's not cranking, man, I'm not righteous anymore. And so when I read scriptures like the righteous are, are shielded by God, I go, man, is that really me? Am I really righteous? Mm. It's always always kind of bouncing back and forth. I don't know if you've been there. Like, I'm in yeah. the darkness, I'm in the light. Am I really in the light? And, but really, Noah was chosen because he believed. Yeah. Look in Hebrews chapter 11. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, Hebrews chapter 11. I can't lie, I've never preached right next to a dog so close to me. That's good. <laughs> He's sleeping. I won't take that personal, though. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 6, says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, he built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. Wow, that's pretty cool right here. There's two requirements to come to God. Not be awesome at speaking. Not be sinless. Not do a great job in your ministry. No, it says 
You just need to believe in him. You believe that he exists and believe that he rewards you. That is why Noah was chosen. That is why we are chosen, guys. It is really not about us. There's, you know, sometimes we think that God is amazed at what we do. There's only one thing that amazes God. Actually, two things. Great faith is what amazes God. The other thing is great lack of faith. That, that was Jesus. He saw the centurion and he goes, oh man, that is great faith. And then he went back to his hometown and Mark says, he goes, oh man, that is a great lack of faith. I'm like amazed at how much faith you don't have. <laughs> and so how could we build the art? It needs to be by faith. I mean, let's just picture that for a second. Have you guys ever seen Evan Almighty? Yeah. 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 Get a little better picture. Yeah. You see that Noah was chosen in the middle of nowhere. There is no ocean. This is where Noah lived. There wasn't like an ocean nearby. And God says, hey, Noah, I'm going to send a flood. He needed to believe that. The hard work was not even making the boat. It was just believing that. There is going to be a flood. For us, that's the same thing. God spoke to us in his word. The fight that we're fighting is the fight of the faith. Remembering that God exists, amen? amen. And that he rewards those who seek him. And you know what? We want to believe this. People want to believe in God. Even, even going around this week sharing, sometimes I got some negative responses, but it just made the whole day negative, I guess. And do you want to go Bible study? No. Why did you even ask me? And I just, if people have like some, like a bitterness towards God. I, I don't know if you ever watched this show House. Yes. It's about this doctor. And he's, he's a complete atheist. He goes to work, he hates everyone at his job, and, and he says he hates his patients, but he's, you know, a great doctor, so he saves them. And I saw an episode last night with my, with my wife there, and, you know, he, 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 loved, he never goes to see his patients. But he finds out that this priest got sick because he was getting drunk, and he, saw, he noticed that the priest was an atheist. So he goes to meet with him, and he loves talking to atheists. So all, all, his, all his other doctors were like, well, why are you going to see him? He goes, i got to meet this guy. He sits down with him, and he starts kind of battling with the priest. He goes, you know, why did you ever believe in God in the first place? And, and you say that you don't have faith. I guarantee you that you have some kind of faith. If you get healed right now, you're going to say it's God. And, and the priest was like, no. And then he looks at House, and he goes, but let me tell you something. You're not wanting to be proven right. You're wanting to be proven wrong. Because you want to believe. You want to have some hope. And House, for the first time I saw him, he was kind of like, I think he's right. He didn't say it. He was so prideful, he just left. But, but it, it brought something to light. People want to believe. They just don't see other people who believe. I mean, doesn't hanging out with the people that believe just give you faith? Just go, man, this guy believes. I want to believe. Yeah. And, and this is what I saw Noah do here. He believed. And there's a couple things that take away our faith. Number one, it's sin. Yeah. Sin takes away our faith. I mean, when you get in sin, I mean, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Jesus comes to bring us life to the full. Yeah. But when we sin, we just lose our faith. Yeah. Number two, trials. Trials steal our faith. We go, God, why are you doing this? And number three, the weak. The weak inside of us and the weak in the church. Sometimes they steal our faith. Because we go, man, well, why don't they just get fired up? But here's the solution. Don't be surprised at these three things. And don't waste them. What am I talking about? Don't be surprised at sin. You know what? You are going to sin. That's... That's the part of our relationship with God is to sin because we repent and he forgives us and it's awesome. But sometimes we get surprised. Don't waste it though. When you sin, just quickly repent and then quickly help another brother, sister, share your weaknesses. And then trials. I'll never forget someone told me that. Don't waste your suffering. What does that mean? You're going to suffer. I mean... We're following Jesus. Didn't he suffer? Yeah. yeah. 
We're not following a king that came with a crown. We're following a king who died on the cross. Yeah. So don't be surprised at your sufferings. Yeah. Just like 1 Peter 4 says, don't be surprised at your sufferings. Yeah. But don't waste them either. Yeah. It would suck to go, you know those people that, that suffer, suffer, but then they stop trying, right. they give up on God, yeah. but yet you see them suffering even more. <laughs> yeah. So they completely went to waste their sufferings. Mm -hmm. And this is why I appreciate stories like Joshua. He gets up here, I suffered, I suffered, but it brought me to God. Yeah. And isn't that what happened when we became disciples? Our sufferings brought us to God. Yeah. But it doesn't change now that we're disciples. We go through some sufferings, they bring us to God. Come on. Amen. And then the weak. You're going to have weaknesses inside of you. I mean, Paul says, I have a thorn in my flesh. I'm praying three times. And God says, no. But you know what? His grace is sufficient. Amen. You are going to have weaknesses that force you to rely on God. God made you the way you are so that you could just rely on Him. Maybe if you were more good looking, you would have been too prideful to become a disciple. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Come on. Amen. Sometimes you don't like the way we look. You know, God made you the way you are. Not just the weak inside of you, but the weak in the church. We need them. I mean, 1 Corinthians 12, literally God says that everybody, in the body of Christ, everybody, everyone has its place. There's yeah. literally weak that are in place of the church. Yep. There is no such thing as a everyone that's strong church. I mean, I, I hear people say that, you know, I want to get everyone strong in my Bible talk, everyone strong in my ministry. That doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. God set the weak in place. Let's go see They're you. meant to be there. Why? So you could force your, you yes. to use the Spirit to love them. Come on, bro. How Amen. else are we going to be you, patient, love, trust? How are we going to tap into the Spirit to be able to congregate and love each other if we don't have the weak? Come on, bro. Somebody doesn't come to church. It forces you to go, man, i got to go give communion to that brother or sister. Yep. Someone is struggling. God allows people to struggle so that we could love each other. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I, coming here to Portland, guys, I think this is going to be my biggest challenge. I just got to stay believing. Number one, because I came from L.A. Everything's spoon-fed to you. Here are the finances. Here's the budget. Here's what your calendar is for the next three months. And you just go, amen. <laughs> but now it's a different type of, uh, of level. And it's exciting because there's a lot of other things coming our way. Uh, it's, I have a five-year-old daughter, and she's going to be moving to Eugene with her mom, coming here in the next few weeks, which is exciting. Oh, you guys are walking to meet her. And, and, and what I love most about my daughter is just God teaches me so much through her. He says, you know, you got to be like a child. Well, my daughter, I mean, all day she's just throwing stuff like, Dad, could, could, could we go to the moon tomorrow? <laughs> And I remember one day sitting down with her and going, do you really believe you can go to the moon? And she's like, yeah. And she was like, die hard. Like, I could go to the moon. And I was like, how are you going to get there? Because, you know, so a lot of times you want to brush off, you know, what they're saying because they're kids. But I just started examining her. She really believes that. She's like, we'll take this. I can pack the lunch. I'll make the suitcase. <laughs> and for me, I cannot take her to the moon. But she believes it. For us, God has no limits. And so when he saw no and he goes, this person believes, of course they're going to have troubles and trials. We look at every prophet in the Bible, this was their struggle. To just keep the faith. We look at people like Ezekiel. You remember Ezekiel? God tells him, go to preach to all the rebellious people. And what does he do? Sit there overwhelmed for seven days. <laughs> what do you do when you just sit there overwhelmed for seven days? We look at people like Job. He had to fight to believe he, that God exists and that he rewards him. I mean, he had to go through a lot of suffering, right? Yeah. We look at people like David. Man, this guy messed up in his purity. He messed up with his friend. He killed him. <laughs> but yet, he had to fight to believe. If I see God, he's going to reward me. We look at people like Elijah, who struggled with all kinds of anxiety. Right? You remember that when he was in the cave? Oh, no. That woman Jezebel is going to kill me. He had to fight to... Okay, God is out there, though. Every prophet, Jonah... Being prejudiced. 
I don't want to preach to the Ninevites. Isaiah, feeling guilty all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a man of unclean lips, God, you can't use me. God's like, shut up, of course I can use <laughs> We look at Jeremiah, the lonely prophet. I mean, how would you like it if they called you the lonely disciple? <laughs> he was, I mean, he had a book called Lamentations, just a book of lament, just crying all the time. Because <laughs> no one wanted to follow him. But he had to fight to believe that God was still existing in his life and that he's going to reward him. Yeah. And then lastly, Moses, who's just feeling all kinds of doubts about himself. God, if they ask me, what's your name, what I tell them? <laughs> and God just goes, just tell them I am who I am. And then that's when Moses had to fight. God exists and he's going to reward him. So guys, the way we're going to build this ark is we got to fight to believe God exists and that he's going to reward us when we seek him. Amen? Amen. Yeah. The second point is build by obeying God. Let's go to Genesis 6. Come on, Caesar. Genesis 6 and verse 15. Verse 15, this is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high. Make a roof for it. Finish the ark within 18 inches of the top. Put a door in the side of the ark. Make lower, middle, and upper decks. I'm going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you. So this is pretty cool here. God tells Noah exactly how to build the ark, right? Yeah. For us, guys, God has told us how to exactly build his ark, the kingdom of God. Amen. But not just that, he's taught us how to build our life. You know, I, I remember that movie, Evan Almighty, because one of my favorite parts was when everyone's making fun of him, you know, he's making the ark, and people uh -huh. are going, dude, you're an idiot, nothing's going to happen. He's like, there's going to be a flood, everybody come in. And everyone's just taunting and making fun of him. The newscast is there going, you know, this guy is losing his mind. And Noah's just going, get inside the boat! Yep. He was obeying God, but other people around him weren't. Well, my favorite part was right there, because the newscast that was kind of making fun of him, the flood comes, he drops his camera, and he goes, everybody get in the boat! <laughs> and see him all get into the boat. But you could tell Noah to build an ark, is, is, it's the same thing. We're building his church, mm -hmm. but we got to build it the way he says we need to build it. Yeah. Who is the animals inside the boat? It's us. Mm -hmm. I, I look at uh, scriptures like Isaiah 11. It says the wolf will live with the lamb and the cow will live with the leopard. I mean, this is us. Aren't we all different? Just take a look around. Yeah. We're all different. But God told us to build the ark in a spiritual way. And I think sometimes we want to build our relationships the way we build them in the world. Yeah. What is this person like? That person doesn't like to hang out. With, you know, that person doesn't like to do this. Um, he doesn't like lacrosse. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the way God told us to build our relationships. Off what you like. This is the way God told us to build our relationships. Forget about what you like. And start loving your brother and sister. That's it. The only thing that really binds us together is that we're all insanely building an ark in the middle of nowhere. Yes. Yeah. Like, why in the world did we move? I mean, it's funny when we tell people poorly because I get two responses like, where is that and why? When I was in LA. <laughs> poorly, oh, it's a city in Oregon, but why? And it doesn't make any sense. It didn't make any sense to my family. I mean, most of the team that came up here were persecuted even on the way up, driving up here. <laughs> Phone calls, why are you guys doing this? Debbie's mom, do you have to do this? <laughs> but you know what? It doesn't make sense what we're doing until you see the ark and all the animals living in it. Look in Genesis chapter 8. Come on, Caesar. Come on, Caesar. Come on, Caesar. Come on, Caesar. Come on, bro. It must have been a glorious day to leave the ark. And I believe this symbolizes heaven. Genesis chapter 8, in verse 15. Then God said to Noah, 
Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you. The birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground. So they could multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number upon it. So Noah came out together with his sons and wife and his son's wife. Wow. This day must have been glorious to see all the earth again and for God to go the same purpose. Multiply, increase, and fill the earth. Same thing he told Adam, right? Same thing he told Abraham. And jo Joseph and Jacob, multiply and fill the earth. But there's one thing that's going to stop us from obeying God. It's understanding God. I looked up an article about the seven reasons why people fall away. The seven reasons why people leave God. You guys want to hear them? Yeah. yeah. The first one is the world. Church, stop being awesome. And you know, if we're going to build the ark, we have to do it the way Jesus told us to build it, right? Because people might be looking on the outside going, man, th this is stupid. Why are they doing? But you know what Jesus considers stupid? In Matthew 7, he says, foolish is the one who doesn't hear my words and doesn't put them to practice. Yeah. If we could just build with Jesus, everything's going to be awesome. I have no doubt in my mind. I mean... We're going to see incredible miracles here in Portland. Yeah. But we have to just stick with Jesus. Yeah. We have to just make it. I mean, sometimes we're the ones that make it complicated. Right. Yeah. Jesus just says, come to me. And I'm going to go through the seven reasons why people fall away. And this is the salute. You ever see a Staples that was easy button? Yep. Yeah. That was easy. There's, I believe there's a Jesus button that right. we've got to click every day. Well, oh, that was easy. Every morning, just stick with Jesus. Yeah. One of the reasons we've always the world. If we could just stick with Jesus, we'd understand He wants to give us life to the full. Yeah. The second reason is persecution. We get scared or intimidated by persecution. If we stick with Jesus, we'll see He was persecuted to death. And what does He say? If you're persecuted, leap for joy. Wouldn't that be weird if you were getting persecuted and just go, Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> I know the day we're sharing our faith, someone just kind of cursed us out. What if I was just like, yeah, man, keep it coming! <laughs> keep on going! That's what, if you stick with Jesus, that's what he said to do! Yeah. He goes, the, the other great prophets were persecuted. You want to know who's not persecuted? The false prophets. You show me a church that's not persecuted, I'll show you a church that's not following the Bible. Because Jesus says you want to live a godly life, you will be persecuted. So that's why persecution should fire us up. Number three is greed. The worries of this life. And this is why I was so inspired by Lonnie's story because you guys you guys know Lonnie's mom's an incredible disciple. Was looking for a job. Yeah. Well, she found a job, but they told her you gotta work during some of the church services that we're having. So she made a decision. She goes, okay, I'm not gonna take that job. Come on. Why? Because I'm gonna seek first the kingdom. Come on. Come on so then a couple days later, she goes in for an interview in the morning, and then she comes back, and that was her first day of work because she got hired right away at the job. <laughs> Goes to his boss because he wants to give her a sword. He goes, Look, boss, I can't work Sunday anymore. And he goes, What do you mean you can't work Sunday? I'm going to have to hire somebody else then. And Lonnie goes, Amen. May God's will be done. And he goes back to pumping his gas. Come on. But then his boss comes back. He goes, Okay, I want to know. Well, why do you want to get Sundays off? He's like, Well, I want to go to church. And he goes, Okay, I can do that. Mm. Actually, I also need Wednesday nights off. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday nights? And Friday nights. <laughs> so his boss goes, you know what? Give me your work schedule. He changes it. He gets his schedule switched. And he's still working. And he's coming to the meetings. Yeah. <laughs> Greed could take over you. And this is why most people, I mean, you see, study the Bible. They don't get baptized because they're not willing to seek for the kingdom. If you would just press that Jesus button, he has a blessing right around the corner. Yeah. The fourth reason is pride. 
And this usually happens to older Christians, you know, four or five months, six months old. And they, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't know, you got that feeling, you know, you, you do the 40 days of discipleship and you just feel like, man, I got this, you know. I, I, you leave the seeking God study, I know how to lead all the studies. It wasn't that hard. You leave your first Bible talk, oh yeah, you leave Bible talk, I do a GLC search. Wow. But this is what happens with pride. We're, we don't follow Jesus who says, follow me, I'm humble. We just start getting prideful. And this is what happens. You don't feel appreciated. You don't feel... Like you're being looked up to, you know, uh, you, you feel like you can do things better in the church. And that'll take, that takes people out of the kingdom. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter whether you can do it better, and it doesn't matter if you're not the one doing it. God set the time and the places. Yep. And if God set that person there, then he set that person there. We should not have any problem with being discipled by anybody. Oh, yeah, that's right. And even us, I mean, coming here, I just said, you know, I want to make the least amount of changes as possible. But there still has to be a lot of changes. <laughs> and there's going to be maybe some people that get discipled by someone else. And let me tell you, if God can disciple someone through a donkey, you should yeah. be hey, Come on, talk about it. can use a stone, God can use a donkey, that brother is going to give you the discipling that you need. Yep, that's right. That yeah. sister is put there by God to teach you. That's right. The fifth thing is sentimentality. Whoa. This takes people out. When we look at Jesus, press that Jesus button, man, he was not sentimental because he just knew the truth. Matter of fact, he, he didn't even say it was his words. He, just, he was so humble to go, okay, guys, this is not my words. This is actually God's words. The sixth thing is doing things rather than being. A lot of do rather than being. What does this mean? Going through the motions. Going through the motions. And this takes people out of the kingdom. This is huge, guys. Jesus did not go through the motions. Jesus was about having a day, every day be exciting. And this is what I need to battle through all the time, guys. Uh, even last night, I, I was talking with my wife, and I just go, Man, I need to make sure, I went on a nice prayer walk, because I, I have to make sure I'm not going through emotions. I met with a couple of people that day, and, and I was a little discouraged about some situations, and I had to snap out of it and go, I, I love these people. I, there needs to be heart behind what we do. There needs to be a reason why we do what we do. And, and it's funny, because our hearts change. We're so fickle. I mean, I was just, I got caught up in the church, and all the situations, the different Bible talks, and you know, do we have enough food for tomorrow? I, I gotta be honest, I don't know if we have enough food for today. <laughs> we're still, you know, we're trying to figure out how we're gonna do things. So that was one of the things that was on my mind. And then I go, you know what? We love each other, and that's what matters. Yep. I mean, we could sit here and eat grass and be fired up. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we're not gonna eat grass, we're gonna have a great time today. <laughs> but but I, 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 I went on the prayer walk and everything just changed. Uh, and I, I always know I need a prayer walk when, when my wife keeps asking me, Babe, are you sure you're okay? <laughs> and I like, close my laptop, all right, I'm going to prayer walk. <laughs> Come on, bro. And it changed my heart. It's so funny. We, get, we could do things with our heart or we could do things out of commitment. Just do it, obey. Yep. It's not going to work. You're not going to last right. long in the kingdom, but just doing and obeying. Yeah. Right. You need to understand why you do what you do. Yeah. Like just loving God, having a heart for people. <laughs> And then the seventh thing, which I think is the most important one, is not understanding the grace of God. Yeah. Not understanding the grace of God. Look in 1 John chapter 1. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. 1 John chapter 1. In verse 1, or verse, verse 8. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. It says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make Him out to be a liar, and His word is not in us. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. yeah. You seen that movie, uh, Evan Almighty? I already asked this. <laughs> There's a part where... He's trying to shave, right? <laughs> and once he shaves, he looks in the mirror and he has another beard. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then he shaves again, and he gets a bigger beard. <laughs> and I thought, man, that is exactly us as disciples. Yeah. Like we have sin, and then we just repent, and then the next day, man, there's more sin. <laughs> and then we try to repent from that, and then more sin comes. <laughs> and then you repent, and you look at your ministry, and there's definitely more sin. Yeah. <laughs> And God's plan is for you to take hold of His grace. Yeah. To just, you know that feeling you had at baptism? When you got out of that water? Yeah. You remember that, amen? Come on! Yeah. And you were so fired up. That's the same feeling God wants you to have every day. Come on. Yeah. Every day celebrating the grace of God. You know, I appreciate what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15. He goes, I'm working harder than all the other apostles. But it's not me. It's the grace of God that's in you. Wow. Yeah. So if we're going to build this art, we've got to be celebrating every day the grace of God. That's what's going to push us to work. The grace of God that's in us, that he saved me, therefore I want to go and help other, other people get saved. Amen? Amen? The last point is build by fearing God. We've got to build by walking with God, by obeying God, but by fearing God. Look in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Come on, Caesar. Let's go, bro. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11. It says, Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade others yeah. what we are is plain to God because God has made it plain to them we are not trying to commend ourselves to you again but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than what is in the heart if we're out of our mind as some say it is for God if we're in our right mind it is for you for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all. That those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. This is incredible here. Because it says that we know what it is to fear God, so we're going to try to persuade others. But there's two ways of fearing God. There's two sides to it. This is the Ark of God, the kingdom. We see all kinds of animals here. One type of fear that you get is going, oh my gosh, God, this is the kingdom. That's incredible. This is amazing. But the other fear of God that we must have is, just Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in these days. That's another type of fear, right? Yeah. That's like, a, oh man, this is the kingdom of God. Man, that day is coming. Mm -hmm. Just like it was in the days of Noah. What were people doing? Eating, drinking, partying, studying, and then the flood came. Yeah. For us, what are we going to be doing? Eating, drinking, studying, and then that day is going to come. Yep. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to get out of the ark and step in being in the fear of God because you're in awe of it? Come on, bro. Mm, yeah. Come on, Caesar. And you know, for some people, the story of Noah could be uh, one to be used against God. Why would God destroy the whole earth? Why would God cause people to suffer? Why did God give us that decision? You ever wonder that? Why did God give us the free will to, to even make decisions in the first place if we're going to mess up? Well, I want to close out with a story. Okay called the seed of love the seed of love why did God choose to love us why did he create us when he knew things would go so bad that's a question many of us ask right well I have a question for you why do you have children I mean there's no guarantee that they're gonna grow up and like you or even love you in return you don't know but there's one reason Love. Let's imagine behind all of everything, there was a choice, a deliberate decision. God didn't have to do it, but he chose to. We don't know when this happened, 
There was no time yet. We just know that he did it. He chose to create. With one decision, history began. Out of nothing came light, then day, then sky, then earth. A mighty hand began to work. He created something incredible. Just like a painter cannot not paint and a runner cannot not run, the creator could just not not create. But you just look at all his creations and you saw love. There was no bitterness, no evil, no cruelty, just love. And he looked at everything he created and he said, this is good. But it just wasn't enough. The greatest work was not completed. Let's try to imagine what happened in this day. He placed a scoop of clay upon another until a lifeless form laid on the ground. All of creation paused in expectation. God said, you will love me, nature. You will obey me, universe. You will reflect my glory, skies. But this right here, this one will be able to choose. Everyone was silent. The creator reached into himself and removed something yet unseen, a seed. It's called choice. An angel spoke up, but, but, but what, if he, what if he chooses not to love you? The creator finished, come, I will show you. And unbound by time, they walked into the realm of tomorrow. There was the seed of choice, the fruit of it, the sweet and the bitter. The angel gasped at what he saw. For the first time, he saw spontaneous love, voluntary devotion, chosen tenderness. He had never seen anything like this. He felt the love. He absorbed the kindness, the warmth. Heaven has never been so beautiful, Lord. Truly, this is your greatest creation. Yes, but you've only seen the sweet. Now let's go and witness the bitter, the stench. What is this? The angel proclaimed in horror. The creator answered in one word, selfishness. The angel stood in silence as they paused through the centuries of filled, rotten hearts, broken promises, forgotten loyalties. This is the result of choice, the angel asked. Yes. They will forget you. Yes. They will reject you. Yes. They will never come back. Some will, but most won't. What will it take to make them listen? The creator walked on in time until he stood by a tree. Soon it would be cut, trimmed, mounted, and soon he would hung on it. He felt the wood against his back. The angel asked, will you really go down there? Yes, I will. There is no other way? No. Wouldn't it just be easier if you don't plant the seed and not give the choice? It would. But removing the choice would remove the love. Wow. He looked around the hill, Three men hanging, soldiers mocking, religious men smiling, women weeping. All heaven stood to fight. All nature rose to rescue. All eternity was prepared to protect. But the creator gave no command. It must be done, he said. And as he stepped back in time, he heard that cry he would someday scream, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he ranched at tomorrow's agony. The angel spoke up once again. It would be less painful if you... The creator interrupted, but it wouldn't be love. And again, they were in the garden. And love grew within him. As he looked upon this clay creation, he had died for the creation before he had made him. They were not speaking of the face or the body. They were just looking at inside, the soul. It's eternal, another gasped. Within the man, God had placed a divine seed. A seed of his self. The God of might had created the earth's mightiest. The creator had created not a creature, but another creator in his image. And the one who had chose to love had created one who could love in return. And now it's our choice, guys. God gave us the choice. And I pray that we could make the right choice. To love God. To obey him. To fear him. And to watch God do amazing things here in the Ark of Portland. And to God be the glory. Come on.